Wow, quite a full tent, uh, but it's obvious uh, if there's such an interesting talk about the badge everybody is wearing here. So give a warm welcome to the two program managers of the badge project. Uh, it's called Nies and Sebastius. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, wow. Um, thank you for having us. Um, it's been an interesting, uh, well, half a year, at least, year. And uh, we'd like to tell you something about it. Um, I'm Sebastius, also known as Sebastian Oort. That's my real name. Next to me is Kartoffel, the team lead for the badge team, uh, in real life, Nick Blankers. I'm a teacher. Uh, Nick is a student in electronics. And let's celebrate the badge. So today we have two stories to tell you. Uh, Nick is going to take you through uh, basically from concept and all the hardware design and everything that went into getting the badges produced, uh, the electronics. And I'm going to focus on celebrating the badge, what it has done for us as a community, what it has done for the camp. And that's, uh, that's the main plan. So on to you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to take you back to um, 2015. Um, let's show some hands. Who here has been to the CCC camp of 2015? OK, that's a lot of people. That's very nice. Um, so this team for the SHA 2017 badge started just after CCC camp, uh, mostly with a lot of brainstorming, a lot of ideas, some better, some not that good. Um, but after some brainstorming, we kind of um, settled on a few goals, on a few concepts that we wanted, uh, that we kind of needed the badge to satisfy. Uh, first and foremost, uh, it has to work as a name badge. I think it's safe to say that we managed to make that work. <laughs> um, second of all, um, the badge has to augment the event, so it has to be usable during the event, not just uh, after. Then third, uh, it has to be very easy to, to hack, to modify, to write programs for, uh, to distribute programs for, to other badge wearers. Uh, and finally, we wanted to have the badge available from the start of the event. For the f so for the first three points that I mentioned, first one, the name badge, uh, we looked at a few different technologies, we looked at um, LCD and OLED, uh, mostly the second one, because it's a bit more visible in bright sunlight, uh, which is very important if you're going to have a badge on an event like this, which is mostly outside. Right now it's raining, but sometimes uh, there is actually sun. Even though we're in the Netherlands, there is sun. So we had to make it readable in direct sunlight. Secondly, augmenting the event, we looked at uh, Bluetooth beacons for a while. I think it took us until nearly 2016 to realize that Bluetooth uh, low energy beacons weren't going to work. They were just going to ruin the 2.4 gigahertz and uh, the knock would probably kill us for that. So that was also one of the plans we didn't exactly um, use. And then for ease of hackability, we looked at um, some kind of API or web system where you can write simple menu based apps. Also one that we didn't use, but I'll get back to that later. Because by this time, we'd already arrived in the summer of 2016 at EMF camp. Who was there? That's not as many people, but still quite a number. EMF actually had an awesome badge. Uh, we took a lot of concepts from them, actually. Namely, that their badge uh, had Wi-Fi. It ran MicroPython, so an interpreted language. Uh, very easy to write apps for um, pretty much Python, but for microcontrollers. Uh, and it had an app library where you could just download apps from other people from the badge. So we took a lot of inspiration from this. And this badge satisfied a lot of our goals uh, that I mentioned earlier, except for one pretty uh, big one, uh, the name badge aspect. It didn't really uh, display the name all the time. For example, when the battery ran out, it kind of you were walking around with the black screen. They kind of fixed that by putting a white area over top. But we wanted something more elegant. So we arrived at ePaper. Now, ePaper is um, fairly slow. It's new. It's expensive. 
Uh, it's difficult to work with, or so we thought at least. Uh, there wasn't that much information on how to get started with ePaper. So we just started ordering displays. Now, as you can see, uh, some of them have barcodes on them or prices. Uh, that's because this type of display is used a lot in large stores to display prices of items. Um, but you can already see a large advantage. They're not even plugged in, yet they still display their information. S this was uh, quite useful for a name badge, so we decided to pursue this idea further. We ordered a couple of breakout boards. And eventually, you can see on the left it doesn't quite work yet, but you can, see, you can start to see the outline of some letters. Uh, this is just a cheap Arduino breakout we got from China. And on the right, you can actually see uh, it kind of working. Now, to give you an idea of the time frame, this was late 2016, so we were already kind of... I mean, we, we set deadlines at the start, um, pretty much blew through all of them. Um, but at least we got something working, so this gave a kind of boost to um, continue with the badge. So uh, we started ordering prototypes. Now here you can actually see the first prototype on the left. It's basically an e-ink display um, and a simple PCB with an ESP32 microcontroller, um, which was at the time the latest and greatest from Espressif, uh, who we all know, for the uh, fantastically accessible ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi modules. So there's an ESP on the back. There are some buttons on the front, a hardware joystick, and a display, and actually not much more. But it still took us a couple of months to actually um, start using the display. And on the right, you can actually see it finally working. This was at CCC Congress last year, so only about seven, eight months ago. But it was, again, a, a fantastic leap forward. Now, the contrast was still pretty bad. We'll be fixed that later. And one of our team members, TSD, an incredibly skilled uh, C engineer, uh, actually uh, found a clever hack to abuse the display, which was basically one bit monochrome, so either black or white. He found a way to abuse it in order to display a grayscale image. Uh, this may be familiar to you as the same image we used uh, on the badge when you unpacked it. I think by this time we'd arrived somewhere in January, um, and it was kind of time to work on something that resembles a badge a bit more. Uh, so, for example, add a, like a battery management system, a nicer interface in terms of buttons. And uh, we managed to, I think we had another prototype ready by February, um, then another a bit later, and then the final board. And here you can see them all in a nice lineup. So starting from left to right, that's the very first prototype. Then the second board is uh, around February. Um, we were working on that, which is when we originally planned to go into production. So we <laughs> kind of threw that plan away very quickly. But at least uh, we had something that resembled a badge. People were starting to get excited, which in turn gave us a boost. So we worked a lot on the software. Um, but there were still a, a few mistakes. So you can see the second and third versions. The third one is the one that I'm actually wearing around my neck right now, the red Elite version. Um, they might look similar, but there's actually a lot of difference between them. So between the second and third board, we basically did a complete redesign of the power system uh, of the touch controller, because we were originally uh, using one that we never managed to get working. It was a lot more complicated. Uh, and we switched to one that's uh, actually really easy. Um, easy to get, or so we thought at the time. So I'll get back <laughs> to that later. And we also um, changed the, uh, let me think. We, I, th I think we changed the, uh, the display as well, um, like two months before the event, uh, which was kind of a big change, but I'll get to it later. So at, at the point of the red badge, we we're like, OK, we now have a fully functioning badge. It's now time to go into production. This was already around May. So we only had a few months to mass produce 4,500 badges and get them to the event in time. So the stress was kind of ramping up slowly. <laughs> so we thought, 
let's go into production. And from the second line, you can see that we didn't go into production at all. Um, we were still looking for a lot of sponsorships. Uh, I mean, the badge is uh, a, very, a very expensive project. Um, we didn't want to take money from your tickets, so we set out to make the badge sponsored. Uh, so we're contacting a lot of sponsors, trying to get sponsorship for components, for the PCB, for assembly. And we spent a couple of weeks on that, then realized that we weren't going to get everything sponsored. Um, so we um, found a company in China, PCB Way, to produce uh, the PCBs and assembly. They sponsored us in the form of a discount and some additional labor, which I'll get back to. Um, we also got a very nice contact in Shenzhen to source uh, electronic components for the badge for us. It saved literally tens of thousands of euros compared to when we would order them, them ourselves because our team basically has no experience at all at this skill. So it's quite surprising that we even managed to put it off. And it's really awesome to see all of you wearing your badges right now. Um, Nah, so well, basically now we had a company that would produce the PCBs for us, would assemble them, so all of the countless chains of emails could start. Uh, this is only a tiny section of uh, the number of emails that we sent back and forth in order to organize the entire thing. We ran into uh, a couple of kind of, how do I put this lightly, massively breaking, uh, well, complications. For example, uh, the touch IC that I mentioned earlier, we switched to a different one between the red badge and the blue badge that you got, or no, between the second and third, whatever. We switched the, 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 the touch IC. Yeah, to a, to a really cheap one. Yeah, to a really cheap one. Uh, and we, like, it had some extra functions, so we could, could re get rid of some other components. Um, but then when we went to actually source the components, we found out that they are not so easy to get at all. It's already a discontinued chip, but we saw lots and lots of stocks in China. But as it turned out, everybody and their grandmothers were ordering this chip at the same time as us. So we ended up paying, I think, almost twice of what was originally mm -hmm. the plan for those. Uh, still managed to fit it within the budget, fortunately. Otherwise, we'd have to do another redesign. Uh, the displays actually went surprisingly smooth. Uh, we did switch to another model than we originally used in the prototypes right before production um, in order to save a couple, or I think uh, close to 10,000 euros. So um, then I think we had arrived at the start of July. Uh, all of the components were finally in at the assembler, and we were already layers deep in replies of emails. Um, so we decided to do a small test run. Um, for this decision, uh, kind of jaunty from the EMF team, he kind of hammered it into us that we had to absolutely do a test run. We thank him massively for that, uh, because otherwise we wouldn't have found the next error. Uh, so I woke up, I think this was start of July or something, I woke up one day to find an email. Um, I think it was titled something like urgent uh, complication or USB soldering error. And it basically came down to this. The USB connectors that we'd ordered had small plastic pegs uh, on the bottom, but we didn't have holes for those on the, PSB, uh, on, the, on the PCB. So we couldn't actually assemble the USB connectors at all. Now, this was quote unquote an easy fix. Uh, so for now, for the first 18 boards, because we definitely had to get them, we were already uh, in July, uh, we wanted to test them all. So we basically said, well, snip the, the, the plastic parts, sold them on anyway. Um, so then a couple of days later, we got this picture. Uh, these were the, this was still from PCB Way, a picture with two nicely assembled boards. Everything did great. So we were basically like, well, ship it, ship it, ship it. We have to get this as quick as possible. And we want to test it. And then we want to give the OK, produce uh, 4,000, 4,500 badges, and get them to the event as soon as possible. And then we received uh, the 18 boards. Um, we were testing the first one. The power worked. The touch worked. Uh, the ESP worked. We could actually flash our firmware to it. The display worked. Yeah, it, it completely it was, a, it, passed. Was a, it was a dream. The, it, the first bird was absolutely 
perfect, spot on, and we were happy and we were preparing. And then Nick tested a few more. Yeah, we, we tested a few more. So the first one, absolutely perfect. Second one, the touch didn't work. Third one, we weren't able to flash the firmware to it. Fourth one gave an error. Sixth one gave an error. And eventually, we tested all of the boards and found out that out of 18 boards, only eight were actually working. Um, this was kind of a punch in the face for us because we realized that we didn't have basically any time left uh, to fix this. But we tried anyway. We put it under a microscope, uh, measured all the connections, tested. And eventually, we took some pictures and sent them to PCBWay. It's these pictures. You could see that um, on the left picture and on the right picture, some of the pads of the uh, QFM chips, so the USB serial chip and the touch chip, uh, some of the pads aren't refilled properly. Uh, basically, they didn't add enough solder or our solder mask was wrong. We don't know exactly what happened. But we sent this in an email to PCBWay. They were fantastic. They were absolutely really helpful. Um, they experimented on a few boards trying to fix this. And they told us that um, they had fixed the process. I don't know what just happened, but just go with it. Um, PCBWay told us that they had fixed the process, that they knew how to uh, get the failure rate down. Um, so at this point, we basically shouted, go, 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 uh, assemble the rest of the boards. We need them as soon as possible, because we're already nearing the second half of July at this point. And then um, we found another uh, small issue. I don't know if you can call it small, but I'll just explain. Remember the USB connector from a couple of slides earlier? The one that had the little pegs in the bottom that wouldn't fit? We replaced those, sent new ones to PCBWay, but it turned out that the uh, new connector actually had a small lip going down into the PCB. And from the way that the PCBs are penalized before they are uh, pick and placed and put through the reflow oven in the factory, as you can see on the left, there's two boards with a like, V-score in the middle. This score wasn't deep enough. So with this lip going down, they couldn't actually place the connectors on all of the PCBs. So again, um, basically, we had to decide what to do uh, in this case. Um, PCB way, again, they were uh, fantastic. Um, they fixed it completely free of charge. It turned out that in order to fix it, they had to put the panels uh, through the reflow oven first without the connector. Then they would break all of the panels apart and manually solder on the, the, the USB connector. This meant like probably days of extra labor, and they did it all for free for us, uh, which was amazing. So yeah, give them a round of applause. <laughs> So if they, didn't, if they hadn't done this for us, you wouldn't hold their, your, your badges right now. Uh, but yeah, um, by this point, um, we're already really close to the event. I was waking up every day with emails, uh, starting with a topic very urgent, uh, update very urgent, then the next day very, very urgent. So I mean, <laughs> imagine waking up to this. Um, but yeah, and then me waking up uh, with uh, on looking on my phone with a WhatsApp from him, fuck. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a bit stressful. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> we, we, we were kind of close to the event already. Um, so we had them ship the boxes to us. Uh, and I think by the 26th of July, they finally shipped the last box of badges. Um, and we're ready to start assembling the kits that you all got. So I think Sebastian will yeah. explain the rest. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take over. But I I'd like to first go, go back a few weeks, months. Um, but w while this was happening, um, uh, and Nick was getting stressed out because of production, uh, I took over and started ordering, well, basically everything you had in that kit, except for the badge. Um, and it turns out 5,000 times anything is big. Um, yeah, so in the, in the back there are the displays, the, the back stack with the, the yellow tape. Those are the, the, the 4,000 displays. 
Uh, to the left of that are the, the big uh, uh, the bags you, uh, it was all packaged in. To the left of that were, were the batteries, which were not individually um, really packaged in styrofoam or anything, just thrown in boxes and uh, ESD bags. So it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I didn't know you could ship them with UPS like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the front here, to the right, are the, the lanyards. Also, the angel, angel lanyards were in that shipment. Uh, the company that made them were very awesome. Working with, Chine uh, with Chinese manufacturers through uh, Alibaba is amazing. Uh, to the front here are the flyers, and to the left, uh, the glue dot guns. Uh, I'm very sorry about the glue dots. I just ordered, uh, I ordered the strong adhesive, and I should have ordered the extra strong adhesive. I did not know. I wanted you to be able to actually unmount the display, but turned out they do not work well in heat. Um, and to the bottom left are the Velcro pads for the battery. So yeah, uh, I luckily had a spare bedroom. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, I had one. Uh, I had a, uh, a test batch, and I started to promote uh, the event with it because cats do sell tickets. Uh, I wrote a little app to uh, monitor the tickets uh, and. Well, my, th these are two, my two cats, Gizmo uh, to the left and Gadget to the right. And it was a lot of fun making these photos. Um, and the badge was starting to get hyped. We had an, uh, a blog post that went viral. We were on Hackaday, we were on tweakers.net. Uh, Twitter exploded. Uh, our IRC channel got busy. People wanted to get in, uh, people wanted to help out. Um, a special shout out to uh, Art Danian and Doobie. Doobie made the first augmented, uh, the event augmenting app. The weather app was made by him. To the left, Ardanian could not get a board from us. We didn't have them. So he made his own. <laughs> this is an actual working badge. <laughs> we, we actually uh, reflashed it with our firmware at the event to just test it out. And it, it works exactly the same as the regular badge. It was it was awesome. It was a it was it, it was a good feeling to get, to get started. So let's give you some numbers on that, of our hype. Um, we uh, used up to well at least 500 hours of volunteer time. That's excluding the batch team. Um, there was 500 kilograms of batch stuff. Every kit weighs 100 grams, and some boxes and some other stuff. There was 500 kilograms of stuff. Uh, the PCBs from PCBWay. We had less than 5% failure. Uh, and of that percentage, a, few, uh, a third of that was even easily fixable. Uh, we bought 20 USB cables that survived over 1,000 plugins each. Go Anker. Uh, Anker is an awesome brand. Uh, you can get it from AliExpress. They just work. Sorry to make a commercial here, but it's, it's the best USB cables I've ever used. Uh, we burned out one laptop during flashing. Um, we purchased 15,000 stickers with, the, with our logo on it. Um, we had, uh, well, over 20,000 LEDs, and a lot of them were used. Thank you for that. Um, there's, uh, we got 1 20th of this display worth of LEDs. Um, 25 of the Wi-Fi devices on camp were badges. <laughs> 2,000 of these badges were used and unpacked. I'll show you. I'll, I'll give proof of that in a minute. Um, we made 2.4 gigahertz popular again. Knock, knock came to us. <laughs> knock came to us and said, well, normally we get 75% on 5 gigahertz, and the rest is 2.4 gigahertz, and we don't care about that anymore. And uh, the, number was, the number for 5 gigahertz was going up. It, we halved it. <laughs> um, some of you played the SHA 2017 game made by, without us knowing it, by one of our developers, uh, Rabouf. Rabouf, where are you? He's over there. Give him an applause for the, uh, for the game. <laughs> Seven, 700 of you actually uh, installed it um, and at least tried playing it. 150 won uh, by meeting a lot of awesome new people. Uh, there were the, the, on day zero, I believe, or day one, there was the first attempt to decrypt the software. And on day two, uh, someone hacked it. Our compliments. Um, yeah, let's show on. Let's show on. Oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. Go on. <laughs> so this, um, this is fr uh, from this morning. 
the dashboard. Uh, NOC knows best. NOC has, uh, measures everything that you're doing. Uh, well, this is a, a nice breakdown. Uh, Apple uses a similar one to promote their devices. Let's, let's do that too. Um, so uh, the, the, the Yola, 16 devices. The Raspberry Pi, 49 devices. Oh, let's continue on down the list. 40, 490 Windows devices, uh, a few more Macs, um, and a, f a few more iPhones, a few more Linux devices, a few more Android devices. And then the most popular OS of this event on Wi-Fi was the badge. So 2,000 badges at least unpacked and plugged in at least once. It's, it's, it's incredible. It was so nice to, to just drive around camp and see everybody smiling, wearing, wearing these things, soldering on LEDs. It was, it was a, a great experience. But we didn't. We, 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 let's go one step back and look at the kit building. We organized a few sweatshops. While the boards were in production and were already delayed, we decided to, well, Let's at least package everything except for the badge. That's to our left. That's, uh, that's the first sweatshop we did uh, three or four weeks ago um, by a lot of volunteers, a lot of friends. Uh, a few you can see are, all, well, a lot of them are also on this field. A lot of them are also part of the organization, already stressed out with organizing this event, and still they found time to help us out. So six, 16 volunteers assembling all these batch kits. We, uh, we assembled 4,000 bags in three or four hours. It was amazing. <laughs> and then to the right, you can see uh, the boards were already in. We were very happy we were mounting the displays because the displays came in trays instead of properly packaged. And packaging would have been just as difficult as Gluing, gluing them on. So th this is where the glue dots happened. Um, and uh, we, so we uh, uh, mounted this display, then flashed the board so we could test them. That's where we found out the 5% failure rate, filter them out so you would have a better experience at the field. That's also the hardware tester you saw uh, when you reflashed your board during camp. And then mount the displays, package it, put it in a kit, and then we're done. Well, not yet. Oh, photo in the wrong order. And this is where your LEDs started happening. Yeah, we cut up 20 reels of LEDs, at least, or 30, with the three of us. But still, it's a lot of fun. It took two or three or four hours. I don't, 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 don't want to remember. Uh, to the right, uh, a few of the batch kits. Just a few. I said 500 kilograms. It does not, uh, does not come without volume. It's, it's, it was massive. So we were happily on our way. We packaged, uh, during this sweatshop, we packaged a lot of badges. We gave our volunteers, here's a badge. Have fun with it, play with it. Thank you for your time. Well, then the excrement hit the ventilator. <laughs> because, well, our friends c contacted us on RC. Hey, um, you flashed your badge. The badge was working on USB, and it's not working on a battery. Luckily, I just had a shipment in, and I checked, and uh, I checked about 50 boards, and yeah, 50% of the boards were not working on battery. Yeah, yeah, that's what we thought too. 50%, <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, we have one sponsor, Silicon Labs, and they sponsored two and a half thousand USB serial chips, and we were grateful for them, and we still are. And then we purchased, in China, the other 2,000 USB serial chips, which turned out to be fakes, but we weren't, we weren't worried about that because they just work as USB serial. They, were, they went through the flashing process, everything went fine, until you plug in a battery. When you plug in a battery, the, they forgot one little bit on the silicon. They forgot the, pro the protection diodes? Input yeah, in input protection on the actual serial lines. So the ESP powered up its uh, TX line, which in turn powered up, backpowered the USB serial chip, which then toggled the reset line on the ESP. So we couldn't fix it in software. Um, and credit to Marcus, where Marcus, oh, there you are. Credit to Marcus, our hardware designer. He found, a, he, he devised a fix with, within basically 20 minutes. Okay, just uh, cut a trace here and solder on, an, uh, uh, solder on a resistor. 
I exper experimented a bit. I did this with a, well, basically the cheapest USB soldering iron you can find on AliExpress. You can do that with a, uh, so we mounted a resistor that's, there's a, a via, a via beneath here. We cut the trace, added in a resistor, and it worked. Well, how do you rework 2,000 boards? Cutting the traces, soldering them on. So we did another sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> we asked for help, and the community responded in masses. It was amazing. On the top here was still at Rust Space. This was the weekend before the event. So there were already people here building up the event, and there were a lot of volunteers helping us out soldering. This is one photo. This, this does not do, do justice to what happened there. It was hero's work. It was a lot of work. And that night, we packaged up. We, we managed to fix 800 badges, maybe 1,000. Still not done. Still not enough for everybody. Uh, but that night we packaged everything up. Sunday, everything was picked up and shipped to the field. And then at the field, luckily, we had a tent and some tables and some soldering irons and a lot of friends who helped us out. Out of nowhere, people turned up, helped us out to solder these things. So that's why you're all holding a badge right now. The, 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 the sense of community, the sense of togetherness on this project, the, 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 the amazing energy of people is what, what kept us going during all these incre re really terrible setbacks. And it's, it's been so much fun. And the tent was packed ever since. The badge bar was packed ever since. Um, the, 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 the whole badge experience, I, thi I think we've, we've changed the game with it. Uh, the badge bar, by the way, was... Uh, fought up on basically a Thursday night and ordered on a Friday morning. So the Friday morning before camp, I ordered all the, all the stuff for the badge bar and even the, the banners were, were done then. So just to, to have a space for the badge, the, ar the, the arcade got cancelled. Sorry about that. We, we, did be we, we did one better, I think. Um, just get a sip, sorry. And it turns out, if you have a nice badge really easy and if you have a place for it 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 fills it fills the it fills the space it's 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 been uh, this, i just took two photos because i didn't have any time it it was amazing it was the the badge bar was packed from 12 to 12 we had to actually kick people out because we wanted to sleep it has been an amazing experience with our uh, with our team all the volunteers angels stepping in hey i want to help people teach want to help teach people how to solder it was so much fun so again, thank you for that. It, um, we also, uh, the displays were perfect. There were no failures on our side for the displays. Um, but there is, of course, user error. <laughs> we, we, br we brought a few spares. There's a few nicknames. I won't name them at the moment. Uh, the, um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And then uh, on... Yesterday or the day before yesterday? I've completely lost in time. The day before uh, yesterday, we got this. <laughs> Who of you got this on their badge? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Uh, someone, um, the, the flashing stations were used on Saturday before the event. We just shipped them and we didn't bother to change the password. So, and it was on a sticker. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had to get these done, done quickly. So, um, is the, the guy who did this, are you still here? Give, give us a wave. No, we already shook hands. Uh, this, is, um, this is awesome. This is why we're here. I predicted that on day zero or day one, someone would find a way to break all the badges. Well, on day zero, there was, uh, in the hatcher, there was an app that, uh, that bricked the badges. And the ransomware and the viruses got progressively impressive. Uh, and y yesterday, uh, two of our guys uh, basically decided, okay, let's build in a safe mode and let's build in an antivirus. Uh, De Devlol Dev built that or something. I don't know who that is, but thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I already saw exper experiments on how to break that. So, awesome. It, it's been an incredible experience doing this. Um, we'd like to thank a few people. Um, all these companies sponsored us. You've seen them blink on your badge. Uh, Espresso, Guardian 360, Stegen Electronics. Stegen Electronics, I would give, like to give a special shout out because he also showed up during one of the sweat shops to just help hand solder. The owner of the company came to us and helped solder hundreds of badges. Uh, Madison Gurkha, Tra Trans IP, Lease Web, Silicon Labs. Thank you for your donations, for your sponsorship. Two more. All our volunteers during our sweatshops, during, uh, during our crises, uh, during uh, enjoying the badge bar, everyone who helped out on this project, and it's, it's a lot of people. I think we could easily approach 100 out of a team of six people originally on the badge team. Uh, so 100 volunteers at least donating their time to make this project work. It wouldn't have been possible without you. And two more to thank, uh, at least, and there's plenty more I'm forgetting or leaving out at the moment, sorry for that. The EMF crew, uh, Jonti especially, was a mentor to us. Without him, this project would have crashed and burned months ago. Um, and finally, thank you. The, the whole, well, batch life experience is something in uh, a DEF CON, which I just learned. We, I think we have, we've upped the game uh, together. It's, it's, a, it's a great experience, a great sense of community on this project. And Thank you for that. So, oh, he's, he's pointing to me. Is this you have 20 minutes. Sorry? You have 20 minutes if you... Plenty of time. Oh, go. Oh, oh well, we have 20 minutes. If there are any questions and no, answers... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me fix that. Ah. Uh, I'll, I'll close up, please. <laughs> yeah, we could go on for hours. We, we've had such an incredible experience the past few months, uh, ups and downs, a uh, lot of good feelings, a lot of love. But uh, I think it's time to get the nitty and gritty. Uh, if you want details, here we are. Ask us. There's uh, microphones over there, I think. So just walk up to one. Hi. Um, I missed the beginning of the talk, so maybe talk about it, but is there a plan to have Bluetooth support on the badge? Uh, Bluetooth support. Um, we kind of uh, left out Bluetooth support for two reasons. Uh, one, because NOC would kill us, um, because it would murder the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. The second one was that uh, it chews up massive amounts of memory currently. So I hope someone is able to fix that, but for the moment uh, we left out Bluetooth intentionally. Thank you. The hardware is there, yeah. How successful was the sweatshop operation in repairing the badges, percentage-wise? Sorry? How successful was the sweatshop in actually repairing and soldering the resistance? Uh, what the success rate was, you mean? Yes. Um, I'm not entirely sure, because we, uh, when, when you're doing thousands and in a sweatshop manner, you're, you're probably not able to, c to count. Well, we had to have fixed at least 2,000 of them. And not sure about the rest. Uh, there were some failures, but that's negligible um, I, I got yeah yeah sure oh, whichever I, I got the Arduino ID a blinking LED example but I was interested to add support for the, the screen which is using Adafruit uh, uh, GFX library I couldn't find any examples on how to do it with uh, uh, C instead of the Python uh, yeah so um, there is actually somebody who had already uh, used the Arduino ID on our badges after the sweatshop. It's uh, Tramel Hudson. You can look him up on Twitter. He actually used the Arduino ID, imported all of our libraries, and wrote a Game Boy emulator for the badge. <laughs> Thanks. So another one? What is the unitary price for the RGB LEDs that you got? Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Yeah. What's the unitary price that you got for the RGB LEDs? The, the, the price for the LEDs, which is actually fun. Um, each uh, single RGB W LED LED cost in this quantity seven cents. We have six LEDs on one batch. So each kit of LEDs, if you do the math quickly, yeah, do I need to repeat myself? It's 40, 42 cents. Uh, worth of LEDs. 
So yeah, we had to get them. Yeah. Um, the, the hand soldering of the LEDs and the and the motor. Did did you plan that or uh, as an experiment to teach people soldering, or was it more? Um, yes, both. Um, the, the, the 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 problem was that. Um, if you want uh, components on both sides of the board, it has to pass through the pick-and-place machine twice, which more than doubles the cost. So that's why we went with the soldering experience, which was also a very excellent in introduction, I think. Yeah, I think it was good. So, uh, anyone else? Will the hatchery continue to be serviced and remain online? Will we manage to continue playing, or are you opening the source and we can do private hatcheries? Both. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're actually doing both. We're keeping the hatchery open uh, for as long as possible for um, hopefully at least until the next event, but we'll see. Uh, and also, I think there's a team for uh, Bornhack. It's an event, I think, in two weeks or something. Yeah, the Born uh, I al we already talked to some of the Bornhack people, and they were looking into making their own uh, repository for the people who were at SHA, then moved on to Bornhack, so you could use your badge over there and continue on with this experience. What, what is, in, in your opinion, the best application you have found on the hatcheries? Oh, we hope to avoid this question. We specifically left out any awards because we were really unable <laughs> to, to look through them all. Um, if you, uh, this morning, I looked up the stats on the hatchery, how many apps there were. Uh, we were close to 300. Um, so it's impossible to choose a favorite and then uh, leave out all the other awesome stuff. We saw the Pizza Village monitoring app, the Alt Power monitoring app, the Sauna monitoring app. Um, we saw awesome ransomware. We saw uh, a free Mate app where you could actually... People thought it was a hoax, but it was a way to get people to, their, to the village because there was a code on a vending machine. You could enter into your badge and get a Mate, actually. So that, that, that was, it, it was awesome. So too many favorites, sorry. And uh, perhaps you can do them a favor if everybody who has the badge with LED online on his body, he now turn it on, so enlighten the full room with all the LED experience that we can have together this feeling of blinking yeah. lights, camp feeling. Yeah. Um, we were, we're very grateful that a lot of you who've, who've written these light apps uh, toned down the LEDs a bit. Um, the, the, the nickname, um, I, I will not pronounce the, 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 the official name we used, but the, the, the name we used was, was Eyesore uh, on the wiki page. So, so actually, batch documentation slash Eyesore was the page around uh, focused on the LEDs, so they're really bright. <laughs> Who of you used it as a flashlight? Wow. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Any more questions? Any, anything? Yeah. Do you have any leftover badges? Are you selling um, them? We're not selling. Um, we have actually no idea what uh, amount of stock we have left, because there's still people scanning tickets. Uh, that's, that's the first most part. We still have to ship a bunch of badges to all the people who have helped us around the world, uh, friend of teams, um, people who were really part of this event but could not attend for some reason. So that first, we have some broken boards that may end up in hacker spaces at some point. We don't know yet. So that's it. Um, someone mentioned there, were, there was an add-on board for the back, and there were only yeah. a few hundred. We, are there any left? we bought 300 of them. And we, we would have liked to save a few for ourselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, we sold them all on day two, which we did not entirely anticipate. Are you going to make any more? Uh, it's open source. It's on the GitHub, so order yourself. We're really done ordering stuff for the batch. <laughs> so if I want to do commercial uh, version of the batch, are there limitations about uh, it's the PCB? It's fully or open source. Um, you may have to check the licenses that are on the GitHub, because I have no clue what licenses which part is under. So for the, for just look it up. 
But if you do, we do expect pasta. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then give them a big applause for this beautiful thing. Standing wow. ovations. Wow. Gaan we Goed man. Goed gezet. Can the badge team please stand up? The badge team. Badge. If you were on the badge team, please stand up. So Marcus, Rabouf, TSD, uh, Underhand, Sprite especially, uh, Roosted, anyone, Renze. Come on. I don't know, is Anne-Jan here? Jinx, are you here somewhere? Oh, he's not here. Okay, our software team lead is not here, but uh, we'll, we'll share the love. <laughs> Thank you, have a pleasant day. Oh, uh, one final thing, if you're still here, please help out with teardown of this event. If you, if you can spare one hour, it helps the event a lot. Please stay. Thank you. Mm.